Hi everyone, welcome to Kim Folk Farm in Georgia. You may not recognize me, my name is Kim. You will often see my husband on the videos, well always see my husband on the videos. His name is Shane. Um, he's always showing you what goes on in the yard with our processed chickens, our yard birds, our pigs, our turkeys, um, what is happening or not happening in our garden. But today I thought I'd bring you into the kitchen to see a little bit of what I do when this year our garden didn't do well so I didn't get to really process anything. We just had some okra come in and a little bit of corn but nothing else. Um, and my husband may have explained that on an earlier video about why um, we had such a disastrous garden this year. But he has been showing you how we've been getting lots of fruits and vegetables from our farm down the street. Um, they are a peach farm and so we get a lot, a lot of peaches from them. And we also will buy peaches from them to eat and to make jam out of or just um, can some peaches. So today I am making some peach jam for our home and so I thought I'd show you how we do it. If you don't know much about peaches, um, there are number ones, number twos, and number threes. Number ones are real firm peaches that you'll get in the smaller baskets. Um, when you get them, you may want to keep them out on your counter until they achieve the softness that you want, and then you stick them in the refrigerator to slow down the overripe process. Number twos are already juicy. We can eat that day. will probably last about a week or so out, out on the counter, or you can go ahead and put them in your refrigerator. They're the ones that I usually like to get because I'm not in a rush to can them or jam them, and I'm ready to eat them right then, and I love them. Number threes are overripe peaches, and if you get those, then you need to be doing something with them that day or the next day. Um, I just about always get number twos. The peaches that I like to use are the Red Globe peaches. They're really red and they're just very sweet. So that today that's what I'm using, but you can use any variety of peaches that you want. Here are the Red Globe peaches. Now, it didn't really take me a lot of peaches to use for jam. It only takes about 8 to 10 peaches for one batch, which will equal about six pint jars and I have my pint jars sterilized and ready you just need to put them in boiling water or you can put them in the dishwasher through a cycle I also have my seals they're already boiled and sterilized you need your peaches peeled, cored, and chopped up finely now you need one quart of peaches which equals, well, one quart or five pounds of peaches, um, four cups equals a quart or about five pounds, or eight to ten peaches will equal the same amount. All right, you need seven and a half cups of sugar. You want that already pre-measured and out. And a fourth a cup of lemon juice, preferably fresh, but bottled is okay. Your next step is you want to mix your fruit, your sugar, and lemon juice all in a pot, mixing well, and bring to a slow boil until the sugar is all dissolved. You want to stir consistently so there is no sticking or burning on the bottom of the pan. Sugar has a tendency to burn quite quickly on the stove. So just keep stirring until all that sugar is dissolved in the fruit. The next thing you will need is some liquid pectin. I use the Ball Real Fruit Pectin and it only takes one pouch of it. So now that my sugar is all dissolved, I'm going to add it to it. I'm going to mix it in really well and now I'm going to stir consistently. I want to bring it to a rolling bowl and keep stirring and let it boil for one minute. 
Your next step, after you let it consistently boil for one minute while stirring, you pull it off the stove. And as you can see, there's foam all on the top of my jam. And one way to kind of cut down on the foam is add a quarter of a tablespoon of butter to it while with your pectin while it is boiling and there won't be as much. I didn't do it in this recipe honestly only because when I looked at the recipe it didn't say so but all my recipes in the past it's always said to add it is optional. So we're going to have to get some spoons and skim the top of this to get all this foam out. Now you just want to go right along the edge and skim out as much as you can without taking out your jelly. Now it will solidify pretty quickly so you don't want to use the same spoon every time. So I've got a bunch of spoons ready to get all this foam off the top. Now this is what it looks like after I have removed all the foam off the top of my jelly. Next step is to put it in our jars. So now we're ready to put our jam into our pint jars. I'm going, I've got everything that I need. I've got my jars, my, I have my lids, I have my screw tops, um, I have a funnel that I stick on top of my jars. I received this from my aunt many years ago when she was teaching me how to can. You can probably get one on Amazon or even, you know, it didn't even probably Walmart or something like that. Um, so I'm going to begin. I also have a clean cloth at the tip of it. I have it wet so that you can clean the rim of your jars off before you seal it up. So I'm going to begin that process now. You want to leave about a quarter of an inch of head space, which that's about to the, that's right there, right where the, the screw limb starts. So let me just say, always be over prepared to have more jam or jelly than what the recipe may have called for. Most recipes call for six to eight pints of jelly or jam. I usually almost always only get about six per batch, but today I got nine pints of jam. I am so thrilled that I got so many in one batch. The next step after we put our jam into the jars is we're going to write the rims and then put the seals on and the lids on. You're doing this to make sure that there is no jam or jelly on top of the lids so that it has a, a good seal when you're done processing it. just want to give it just one nice little turn not too tight but just a little bit of turn now the next step after you put your lids and 
seals on is that you can put it in a water bath for 10 minutes boiling. Another trick is if your jars and your liquid and your lids are all still hot, you can flip it upside down for five minutes and then flip it back over and you'll, it will seal itself. It's something that I always do. I've never had a problem with. I know other people are a little paranoid that it won't work, and so they do the water bath. It only takes 10 minutes, so it, you know, it depends upon your preference. So I have let my jars sit upside down for about 10 minutes while I cleaned up and then I flip them back right side up. What we're waiting to hear for is a pop sound or as through the day, I'll come in here and check to see if this little bump in the middle of the lid has gone down. Right now I'm pressing it and it's just kind of going up and down, up and down, meaning it has not sealed. And if by the end of the day it hasn't sealed, then I will put them in a pot full of water, come to a bowl for a water bath and let them stay in that boiling water for 10 minutes, bring it back out and continue with it and forward to make sure it seals. If you have any jars that don't seal, you can just put them in the refrigerator to use, but the majority of the time they do seal. I actually have probably through my, since my teenage years up into my mid 40s now, um, I've probably only had maybe, I can count on one hand maybe how many jars I've ever had not seal. So it's rarely a problem. After they cool down and seal, then I'll label them. Jelly has a shelf life of about a year. So for our family, I usually only make one batch because I make several types of jelly and I don't want any of it to go to waste. Um, last thing I think I'm going to do is there is a little bit of jelly at the bottom of this pot and I haven't tasted it yet. So it's actually, this is my first time ever making peach jam and I'm really want to try it and see how it, how it came out. So there's just a little layer of jelly at the very bottom that was left over. Ooh, that is heaven. That should be simple. I cannot wait to have some breakfast and put this on my biscuits or my toast or um, I like jelly or honey on my sausage. That is wonderful. Ooh. I could just lick that pot clean. If you have any suggestions or any comments, just let me know. I really appreciate y'all watching this video and um, watching all of our videos and being a part of Kenfolk Farm of Georgia through YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. Um, like, share this video, comment, ask us any questions. We, we appreciate everything that y'all do for us. And thanks again.